It's our final show of the year on Mobile One The Grid. There's been plenty of exciting racing and a steady stream of incidents across the different series. When you're racing on the limit, things happen fast. We've witnessed the rare sight of a roll from Rovan Pera. Teammates in a tangle breaking the golden rule. Both the Ganassi cars are off. A wall ride right on the edge of the rules in a last ditch bid for a championship. I have never seen anything like that before. The curious incident of a loose lug nut in a neighbor's radiator. Tempers flaring on the infield. And a calamitous celebration. And when the world's laughing, give them more and keep on that winning roll. We get the show underway in the company of the 2022 Formula One world champion. Max Verstappen dominated the F1 season, winning it at Suzuka with four rounds to spare. The emotions were still great. I mean, when I crossed the line in Japan, um, I wasn't a world champion. We still didn't know what the, the point score was going to be, so it took a bit longer than normal. But I was still very happy that we won it there for all the Honda people as well and all the Japanese fans because they didn't have a Grand Prix for a few years and uh, it was great to finally be back there. It was an extraordinary performance after the Dutchman suffered reliability issues in the season opener and again in race three in Australia. I think a defining race was immediately after our retirement straight into Imola where we had to really turn it around and we had an amazing weekend as a team. We knew that it was not lost and anything was possible. I think really kick-started our year and uh, the success we had at the end. We always wanted to try and do better, kept developing the car as well and then gave us the results we got. Turning around a 46-point deficit to Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, Verstappen took the championship lead in Barcelona and by the summer break had an 80-point cushion. But his pick of the victories came next at the end of August. Probably my favorite race was Spa just because of how competitive we were. Of course, my home race was amazing to win that one as well, but just looking at the performance of the whole team and, and the car, I would pick Spa. Verstappen went on to win 15 races, breaking the previous single season wins record of 13 held by Sebastian Vettel and Michael Schumacher. And he also smashed Lewis Hamilton's 2019 points record of 413 with a total of 454. The main target was to win the championship, both of the championships. But in the meantime, you know, to win that many races in a year and break the record was was amazing, something that doesn't really happen that often that you have a year like that where you can win so many races. So we are definitely, you know, just enjoying the moment. Whether the 25-year-old can dominate again in 2023, time will tell. But far from being satisfied with his record so far, Verstappen will be aiming for more of the same. Hopefully, if we can do something very similar, then we are again fighting for the title. So we know it's not going to be the easiest. Everyone is catching up, but we still have a lot of confidence in ourselves that we can do very well. Sports cars now as we join a veteran driver at the end of a racing era. The World Endurance Championship GTE Pro category came to an end in Bahrain in November. It was the final outing for the Porsche GT team and a bittersweet moment for works driver Richard Leitz, who began his journey with the Stuttgart squad back in 2007. I think I was quite lucky because uh, it was at a time where they, they looked around in their Porsche one make cup series, like the Carrera Cup and the Super Cup. They always took one, maximum two new drivers. So it was always the goal to bring young people in and then they learn from the experienced drivers. I would say we learn from them. And from the sporty side, I was quite lucky. I could win the GT Open Championship uh, in my first year and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The 2015 season saw Elite showcase his talent in a stunning overall victory at Petit Le Mans helping the Porsche North America squad to the IMSA GT Le Mans title. An outstanding campaign in the WEC also earned him the GT Drivers World Championship. 15 was the last year of Olaf Mantai as a team boss. It was therefore a quite emotional year because a lot of things worked together in a good way. We won the WEC Championship, which was one of the bigger success I had. Plus I could buy the car at the end, so the car is in my garage. So all this together with the Petit Le Mans was one of the most successful years I had. Porsche's 911 RSR has been synonymous with Leeds' success. And at Le Mans this year, the iconic race car carried the Austrian to a fourth class victory in the French Classic. In modern motorsport, you need the correct team, the correct car, the correct BOP, the luck, the teammates, the correct sponsors. A lot of things have to work together that then, if you do everything right and you have some luck, you win it. 
The works pilot's speed in the 911 RSR is only matched by his exploits in his spare time. In fact, a passion for ice racing and other high-speed thrills almost led to a different career altogether. Well, I, I'm a failed rally driver. You know, my goal was, was always to be a rally driver. But I think that now I am going in the wrong way. I'm way too old for it. And if you look the onboard of the rally drivers, I'm lucky because they are quite mental and the speed they go is impressive. Luckily, the 38-year-old focused his need for speed on sports cars and his victories in the 24-hour classics at Daytona, Nürburgring, Spa and Le Mans have earned him a reputation as an endurance master. I don't know if I'm a specialist in endurance racing, but I have had lucky moments the last year. When you are there for a long time, there is chances that you have some success. I still would like to win the Sebring race, the 12 hours of Sebring. I'm missing a class win there. This was always a track I really enjoyed, but uh, unfortunately we were not so lucky. Porsche move up to the Le Mans hypercar category next season, so Leitz took his final bow in the works RSR under the lights in Bahrain. That was no fairy tale victory this time, just the end of a memorable era. Of course it's sad. I mean, uh, it's always sad if something ends, especially if you have been there from the beginning. The preparation in 2012, then our return in 13, and now in 22, the last years. But uh, this is life, nothing is forever. We had good moments, we said at the beginning, this is the year where we can relax completely and push uh, like hell and have fun. That's what we're doing now. Time now for a trip across the Atlantic and onto the ovals NASCAR style. The excitement of the NASCAR Cup Series is hard to beat, racing door to door at some of the highest speeds in motorsport on banked super speedways like Talladega and Daytona, it attracts millions of fans worldwide. NASCAR has done a phenomenal job marketing the sport. I mean, you can go anywhere in the world and talk about Daytona, the Daytona 500, and people know what you're talking about. Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, all of those guys, they put the sport on the map. And then you had Dell Jr. come on the scene and it made our sport very mainstream in America. NASCAR's ovals offer a great view of the action. And while the showpiece season opener, the Daytona 500 attracts over 150,000 fans, the sport remains close to its roots. NASCAR's had a very deep history, especially with the OEMs and the manufacturers of win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. So the cars that they see on the racetrack, that's something they can relate to. When they're driving down the street, they see a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota and they go, I can relate to that. That's what I just saw my favorite driver driving the day before. I think this year is a huge reminder of that just in, in the relevance of the way that the car looks to the street car. But if you look at everything that's involved and just where everybody wants to be, no matter how you get here, where you came from or what you worked on or drove or whatever the case may be, NASCAR is really the top level of racing in our country. Even though it's grown tremendously and has a huge popularity in the States, it is still very family friendly, kind of homegrown grassroots and people relate to that. The drivers are typically pretty low key, laid back guys and accessible as well. And so I think that uh, our fans just appreciate that. While safety is paramount, crashes are part of the show. With 40 cars in close proximity, there's always a chance for things to go wrong. And at over 200 miles per hour, the big one is never far away. Oh, oh, crash! 19's gonna go around, he'll collect the one. 22 of Legato also in it. You can't make mistakes. The competition is so close that there's no room for error. And that is something that is so difficult because there's so many different facets of the race. It's not just have the fastest car. It's not just be the best driver that day. You have to have everything. You have to have luck. You have to have the car. Your pit crew has to be on that day. There's so many things that have to go right to win a race in the Cup Series. This season's new Gen 7 Cup car has bought parity with 19 different race winners, including five rookies making it to victory lane. Everyone wants to make it in the Cup Series, but it's not easy. I remember a couple years ago asking Jeff Gordon, I was like, do you have any advice? And he said, everybody wants a winner. And that's the truth. I mean, if you're winning races, no matter what level it is, whether it's in a sprint car at the local level, USAC level, ARCA, Xfinity Cup, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're winning, people are going to want you. The top 25 to 30 cars in the field 
can win on any given weekend, and that is a very competitive field. And that environment makes it so exciting because every single weekend is a new weekend and a new opportunity for a race team to go win. With race wins so precious in NASCAR's top category, drivers face fierce rivalries. On and off the track, the NASCAR Cup Series always provides drama and the fans love it. There's always a storyline, whether it's the drivers fighting each other, whether it's underdog, whether it's the guy that's won 10 races this year, there's always a story. And NASCAR does a really good job of promoting that story. I feel like that's why NASCAR has been able to stay on top for as long as it has because there's always something to talk about and the fans are as passionate as they are. It's just wildfire at that point. We relive an historic season now with the World Rally Champions. The world watched on this season as Toyota's Kali Rovanperä and Johnny Haltonen followed in the footsteps of the legendary Flying Finns, fulfilling their childhood dreams and becoming World Rally Champions. Of course, it has been a dream for a long time. When I was really small, I was not even dreaming so much about the championship, but now being professional, it was always the dream to win the championship and to get it now, it was a dream come true. The feeling I felt, it was a big relief. It comes from 15 years being in the sport. It's something I have never felt before. It's so strong and it's coming like this, boom. It's hard to describe, but it's uh, something super. 2022 would see the Toyota Duo clock up six victories, and by round two in Sweden, their campaign was well underway. Rally Sweden was quite important because it was the first win for the new Rally One car, so it was nice to be the driver to get the first win. It was, uh, of course, a nice moment. It felt a bit relieved to see that we are on the pace this year, and it was an important moment for the team also. Team boss Yari Mati Lavala watched his 22-year-old star take command of the new hybrid Rally One car faster than any other driver adding victories in Croatia, Portugal, Kenya, Estonia and New Zealand. Kala did an incredible season. Originally, when he came to this 2022 season, I thought he's not ready to be a world champion. Maybe the 23 is the year when he could be the champion. But very early in the season, he started to show his skills. The starting point in Monte Carlo, Kalle was already on the attack zone from one and a half days driving with the car. And since that, he was 100% committed and that made the difference that then he was able to push the limits when the others probably were still learning and getting the feeling for the car and making the confidence. Following in the footsteps of legendary Finn Marcus Kronholm, Robin Perra secured the title in New Zealand becoming the youngest ever champion. It's quite a big relief after so good season. Biggest thanks goes to the team of course they made this rocket this year. Everybody at the workshop also and at Japan so big thank you. When Kalle became a world champion, it was very exciting because even in Finland, there's not been a champion for 20 years in rallying. So for a Finnish nation, it was a very, very big deal. Also for our team to have a new world champion, it's a remarkable, this young age breaking all the records. It was amazing and uh, all the time I had 100% confidence that he will be the champion. For the champion himself, preparations for the new season of Rally Monte Carlo are already underway, but some well-deserved R&R is on the cards as well. I'm going to just have a nice holiday. We are still here in Japan after Rally Japan, so I'm going to stay here, do some drifting, which I enjoy a lot, and uh, just have a nice time with my friends and family. Time to up the voltage now as we hit the test track with an electrifying new racer. Prior to the launch of Gen 3 and the Season 9 opener in January, the Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team's Pascal Verlein and new signing Antonio Felix de Costa have been busy preparing the latest 99X Electric. Capable of 200 miles an hour, it's their fastest Formula E car yet. The new car, it's, uh, it's a massive step forward in, in terms of power, less weight. So, you know, as a racing driver, every time you get more power, you're happy. It's been great working with Pascal as well. Only early days at the moment. We still got a few months to go until we go racing, but uh, everything looking good. I think it's quite a big change from, from Gen 2. Um, obviously, the car is lighter, it's faster. We have a new tire, which behaves quite different to what we had before. So many things to learn and understand and definitely exciting times. Formula E cars share a common chassis, but under the bodywork, the 99X's rear drivetrain and software like the brake-by-wire system are built in-house at Visac and refined on the test track. We have a lot of work to do regarding performance, reliability, uh, integration of our systems to the common parts, 
and this workload will be dictating the next weeks. This means until arriving to the pre-season test in Valencia, the whole test program is really intense with a really tight schedule until the first race. The drivers need to get to grips with a lighter, nimbler Gen 3 car optimized for street racing, which features front and rear powertrains for the first time. The driving style needs to be different. There's new tires, new powertrain, new chassis. So the way to set it up is different. At the moment, there are so many topics that need to be refined. And we only have a couple more test days before we actually go racing in Mexico. So it feels like time is short. It's a race of development. Whoever finds the most lap times in those couple of tests will be in front uh, in Mexico. We are still in that process of understanding. We want to be faster in push laps, but also in a longer distance and be efficient. That's still the key in, in Formula E and also the key with the new car. December's pre-season test in Valencia will be the team's last chance to progress before the action gets underway in Mexico City. There's still a lot of lap time to be found, obviously, in something new. So uh, it will be interesting to see and uh, development will never stop. So we will still find big improvements during the season, understand the car better, understand the car better on different tracks and hopefully we, we can be a step ahead. Formula E champion in Season 6, Porsche's new star also has high hopes as the team embark on a fourth all-electric campaign. The most creative teams will be the most successful, at least in this early stage. So I'm just trying to make sure that everything I've done in the past, both good and bad, we put all that together and we try and progress as fast as we can and hit the ground running with a very competitive package. We end the show and the series with a look back at our global tour in 2022. This season's road trip began in Florida at the 64th Daytona 500, and we were there, along with a sellout crowd celebrating NASCAR's showpiece. We're going to try and keep all four of our cars together, really work hard together, and just see that we can't help each other get to the finish line and then let them race it out. Big. Crash on the back straight away. The big one claimed some key contenders, but Austin Sindrick survived to take his Maiden Cup Series win. Holy cow, Ryan, kid. You just won the biggest race of your life. It was a short trip northwest to Gainesville and a maiden win, too, for Smoke's TSR Nitro team in the Gator Nationals. It's my first win as an owner in NHRA. It's Matt Hagen's first win at the Gator Nationals, so this is a pretty historic day for all of us. Our road went south to Super Sebring, where Toyota began their World Endurance Championship defense with an unfamiliar loss to hypercar rivals Alpine. Lopez in the number seven Toyota is into the tires at high speed and he's gone over. The first most important is that Jose is okay. Already when he was upside down, he came on the radio and said, guys, I'm okay, I have no pain, I will get out. After second place in the WEP race, the bad boys from Detroit Corvette Racing were looking to go one better in the IMSA Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring. We learned a lot in the WEP race yesterday. It used to be a long, tough race, but I think we're going to be in a good spot come the end of it. Corvette sensational. Antonio Garcia brings home the C8R and wins the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring. We switch from the world of endurance to sprint racing with a trip to the Nürburgring, where Nicky Katzberg had swapped a Corvette for a BMW. If I only do endurance racing, I miss sprint racing. If I do sprint racing only, I miss endurance racing. So I'm one of the lucky guys that gets to do both. We meet the most committed races on our travels and competing in in NASCAR's truck series and in dirt modifieds in the same weekend, Stuart Friesen was as dedicated as they come. They're two totally different animals, um, but it's really cool. It's neat to be able to do both, and I think it helps my skill set. We found Max Blair, a World of Outlaws late model rookie, but a true dirt specialist. Rookie contender Max Blair wins a Cherokee. I guess everybody's normal is a little different, right? Um, this is my normal, and I go to a, an asphalt track. That stuff looks different to me. With the June sunshine came the 24 hours of Le Mans, where teams were enjoying the unique atmosphere of the driver's parade. Most of the people know your name, you know, Kevin, here and there. And, and you have to, to jump out of the car and sign autograph and do some selfies, and you really feel like a rock star. Rock star! Corvette's lunch horn brought them no luck in the race. GTE Pro Honors going to Porsche. In the hypercar class, Toyota rewrote the record books. It's an historic fifth consecutive victory for Toyota Gazoo Racing. 
Marcus Ericsson won the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indy 500, and became just the second Swede to pour the milk, but it was an Australian who took the season title. Will Power joined some very famous names as a two-time NTT IndyCar Series champion. We joined motorsports best all over the world and in the Australian supercars, Walkinshaw and Dretti United showed us that racing is all about relationships. And Chaz Master takes his fourth victory of 22. Chaz is a unique individual. It's probably a little bit more touchy-feely than I'd like, but apparently I give him good luck when he gives me a bear hug, so uh, we'll keep up with that for now. At the 100th Pikes Peak Hill Climb in Colorado, Lonnie Unza was keeping up the family tradition, but a crash in practice had her dad worrying. I crashed many times. It, it's different when it's your kid. She took a hard hit, but um, she's good. A little bit sore today, and we'll get it back on the hill and get it ready to race on Sunday morning. In true Unza style, Lonnie would get the rebuilt Cayman Club Sport to the top of the mountain, finishing second in class. It's super special to be a part of the 100th year running, you know, because of my family history. And this is the perfect year for me to do this. It's really an honor to me to be able to run it. It was a dream end to the season for Toyota. Having swept the titles in both the World Rally Championship and the Rally Raid, a 1-2 victory at the WEC finale gave them eight FIA titles in 2022. We can't wait for next season to see if Max can make it three in a row. And can Porsche topple Toyota at the Centenary Le Mans? See you next time.